My friend, former Congressman Bob McEwen has a wonderful speech about the uniqueness of America. Let me quote him in an excerpt. Only 4% of the population of the world are able to call themselves Americans. And yet every year that little 4% writes more books, more plays, more symphonies, more copyrights, more inventions than the other 96% combined. And so I want to keep asking why. For thousands of years, people hope to someday fly, as did some good Ohio boys. By the way, they were from uh, McEwen's congressional district. The Wright brothers invented the airplane. And McEwen's great uncle, he was their bookkeeper. And Orville just died in 1947. That's right, Americans decided that there could be an airplane. They invented the light bulb and the telephone. When you see an airplane fly, it has tires on it. Why? Because an American named Charlie Goodyear invented the vulcanization process for rubber. And inside of the plane, it is air conditioned. Why? Because Willis Carrier, an American, invented the air conditioner. And airplanes have lights flashing. Why? Because Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. The list goes on and on. But why this place and not the rest of the world? There are skyscrapers all over the planet. Why? Because an American named Elisha Otis in Vermont invented the safety elevator. And skyscrapers are in places where it's 100 degrees because air conditioning made it possible because of Americans. You know, Bob McEwen, he's right. In our recent episode, number 219, about Fast Daddy Rickenbacker, we shared that the great science societies and experts all said it would take 10 million years before man could achieve flight. Two months later, two individuals named Orville and Wilbur proved them wrong. And just like Bob, I could go on and on about the creativity of individuals. We all know about the revolution of the iPhone. It was made possible in part by my good friend, Gil Emilio, who invented the optical sensor that makes the camera work. Gil went on to be CEO and chairman of Apple. What sets America apart is individual liberty, the breeding ground for innovation and creativity. Collectivism can't compete. Our founders knew this. They created a provision in the Constitution so Congress could create patent rights found in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8, regarding intellectual property. In it, Congress was granted authority to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited time to authors and inventors, individuals, the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. President George Washington signed the first patent law in 1790, and it said he, she, or they could be protected. That's about individuals. It's a powerful acknowledgement, no matter the race or gender. Women inventors could own patents in America even before they could vote. Skin color wasn't a barrier either. There's a long history of black American inventors making the world a better place. Our friend Dr. Ben Carson makes the point powerfully. Let's watch a clip from an earlier episode. I don't care what your race is. You could walk down the streets of Dallas, Texas, and you could give them a black history lesson they'd never forget. You could start out by pointing to his shoes and say it was John Black. Motzlegger, a black man who invented the automatic shoe lasting machine, which revolutionized the shoe industry throughout the world. And he steps on that clean street. And you tell him, what did Charles you say? Brooks. Charles Brooks. Oh. <laughs> 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 she said, and you say it was Charles Brooks, a black man who invented the refrigeration system for trucks, later adopted for airplanes and trains. And then it comes to a stop at the red light, and you tell them it was Garrett Morgan, a black man, who invented the traffic light. And you can tell how he also invented the gas mask, saved lots of lives during the war. You talk about the war, you talk about Henrietta Bradbury, a black woman, who invented the underwater cannon, made it possible to launch torpedoes from submarines. And then you see a beautiful black woman walking down the street. A black man did not invent her, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you can take that opportunity to talk about Madam C.J. Walker, a black woman who invented cosmetic products for women of dark complexion, was the first woman of any nationality in this country to become a millionaire on her own efforts. And then you'll walk past the hospital, Charles Drew and the contributions to blood banking, blood plasma understanding, and your operating room. Daniel Hale Williams, a black surgeon, the first open heart surgery successful in the world. And you look up at the surgical light, Thomas Edison. You didn't know he was black, did you? <laughs> well, he wasn't, but 
but his right hand man, Louis Latimer, was. It was Louis Latimer who came up with the filament that made the light bulb work for more than two or three days, invented the electric lamp, incandescent lighting, diagrammed the telephone for Alexander Graham Bell, was a tremendous inventor in his own right. Most people have never even heard of him. He walked past the railroad tracks, Andrew Beard, the automatic railroad car coupler spurred on the Industrial Revolution. Elijah McCoy, the automatic locomotive lubricating system. In fact, Elijah McCoy had so many inventions, people would say, is that a McCoy? Is that the real McCoy? <laughs> you, got, you got people like David Duke talking about the real McCoy, don't even know who he's paying homage to. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, the fact of the matter is, those were tremendous contributions, and I'm just barely touching the surface. But here's the coolest part. I can take that same walk down the street for virtually any nationality in this country and point out tremendous contributions that were made. That's why we're called the United States of America, and we should not let anybody destroy that for us. <laughs>